What's going on guys, it's me the Real Mossy and it's time to get your guns up. This time we're going to be taking a look at the top 5 LMGs. Alright, before we start I just want to thank the damn hobo lover for providing this awesome HD gameplay. He's a great team player and a nice guy so please check out his channel and subscribe. He has a lot of short, exciting clips there. The link to his channel is on screen right now and another link will be in the description. Alright, now let's get into the LMGs. There are basically two types of LMGs, the ones that do heavy damage and have a high suppressive effect of 10% and the ones that do light damage and have a lower suppressive effect of 7%. The suppressive effect of a gun is its ability to make the enemy screen blur, amongst other things, when you shoot at him. Okay, so coming in at number 5 is the monstrously powerful M60E4. So if it's so powerful, then why is it so low in the rankings? Well, the M60E4 is a very specialized weapon. I mean, most of the LMGs are, but the M60 is one of the most limited and difficult to use LMGs out there. I'll tell you what I mean by limited later, but first let's get into the stats. The M60 is the second last support weapon you unlock. You need a total of 130,000 experience points to unlock it. It has the lowest fire rate out of all the LMGs at 580 RPM. In fact, it's the slowest fire rate of any automatic weapon in the game. The M60 is one of three heavy damage LMGs. It does a max damage of 34 and minimum damage of 22 at a drop off range of 8 to 60 meters. What this means is that if your target is within 8 meters, the M60 will do the maximum amount of damage of 34, which is a 3 shot kill. If your target is between 8 and 60 meters, the damage drops off linearly and reaches the minimum at 60 meters. If the target is farther than 60 meters, the M60 will always do its minimum damage of 22. The M60 E4 has a huge capacity of 100 rounds and a max capacity of 200 rounds with the extended mag attachment. Normally, you start off with 300 total rounds, 100 loaded and 200 in reserve. If you use the extended mag's attachment, you'll start off with 400 rounds, 200 loaded and 200 in reserve. Now, if you use the ammo specialization, you'll start off with 500 total rounds, so 100 loaded and 400 in reserve. And if you use the ammo specialization with extended mags, you'll start off with a whopping total of 600 rounds, so 200 loaded and 400 in reserve. But seeing as you'll be using the support kit with free ammo crates, it doesn't really make sense to use the ammo specialization with this gun or any other LMG for that matter. Let's move on to the reload times. If you watch my top 5 assault rifles video, you'll remember that most of the guns in Battlefield 3 have two reload times. One when the gun has at least one bullet left in the mag, and one when the gun's completely empty. Well, this doesn't apply to belt-fed LMGs. Belt-fed LMGs like the M60E4 have only one reload time regardless of whether the gun is full or empty. Alright, so the M60E4 has one of the slowest reload times at 7.2 seconds. But that doesn't really matter because you won't need to do too much reloading at critical situations if you use this gun correctly. So, how do you use this gun correctly? Well, we know it fires very slowly and it takes a very long time to reload. It also has a very noticeable upward kick so it takes some getting used to. It's also very bulky and takes a long time to aim down sight. All of these factors make the M60 a very specialized gun. It excels in mid to long range defensive roles where you're in a set position away from the action and you don't have to move too much or react too quickly. Because of its low fire rate and bulk, it's not the best choice for close quarters combat or hip firing. Its high vertical recoil and defensive specialty make it a prime candidate for both the bipod and the flash suppressor attachment, both of which reduce vertical recoil amongst other things. Let's move on to number 4. And at number 4 we have the M27 IAR, which is pretty much an assault rifle in LMG clothing. If you want an LMG to run and gun with, this one's for you. It's available by default for the US side, but you need a total of 170,000 experience points to unlock it for the Russian side. It has the second fastest fire rate of any LMG at 750 RPM, which is pretty much the average fire rate over an assault rifle. The M27 is a light damage LMG, which has pretty much the same damage stats as most of the assault rifles. It has a maximum damage of 25 and a minimum damage of 18.4 with a drop off starting at 8 meters and reaching the minimum at 50 meters. So you'll notice that compared to the heavy damage LMGs, the damage is not only lower but it also drops off to its minimum faster. So it reaches the minimum at 50 meters instead of 60 meters. The M27 IAR also has the smallest mag size of any LMG with 46 rounds in a mag. You start off with a total of 184 rounds, 46 of which are loaded and 138 are in reserve. 
and if you use the ammo specialization you'll have a max of 276 rounds 46 loaded 230 in reserve now this is the only non belt fed lmg on this list so it has two reload times its reload time with at least one bullet remaining is 1.9 seconds which is faster than a lot of assault rifles and its empty reload time is 2.5 seconds all right so now that the stats are out of the way let's take a look at how this gun handles it's actually pretty easy to use you can use it almost exactly like an assault rifle the m416 comes to mind immediately it has some recoil up and to the right but it's only a problem when firing at mid to long range the high fire rate makes it very capable at close range combat it's also one of the few lmgs you can get away with hip firing as it has the lowest hip fire spread out of all the lmgs but on the other hand if you want to set up in a defensive position with a bipod the m27 can do that too it's not the best defensive lmg but it can hold its own all right moving on to number three we have the m249 this is another very versatile lmg and it's also very easy to use you need a total of 11,000 experience points to unlock it so it's the earliest unlockable lmg which makes it even more appealing to beginners it has the fastest fire rate out of all the lmgs at 800 rpm which is actually faster than a lot of assault rifles and carbines like the m27 iar the m249 is a light damage lmg so it does exactly the same amount of damage with the same drop off as the m27 it's a belt fed lmg with the same belt size and the same amount of starting and max ammo as the m60e4 now like i said this is a belt fed lmg so it only has one reload time which is 6.2 seconds this is a full second faster than the m60e4 but it's still on the slower end the m249 is a pretty balanced relatively easy to use lmg which can be used in a bunch of different situations it's not as good as the m27 iar at being an assault rifle and it's not as good as the m60e4 at being a pure lmg it's somewhere in between that's why you have a lot of options when using this gun its high fire rate actually makes it pretty decent in close quarters but unlike the m27 the m249 is a poor choice for hip firing since hip fire spread is on the high end but having said that with the blistering 800 rpm if you really have to hip fire or spray and pray the m249 isn't a terrible choice just try to aim down sight whenever you have the chance and when aiming down sight and burst firing this gun is actually pretty easy to use it's great for beginners it has a pretty even recoil distribution so you can even get away with firing it at full auto at mid range especially with a bipod all right now we're moving on to the heavy hitters coming in at number two is my favorite gun in the whole game the pkp pishenegg this thing is a beast and it's so fun to use but why is it number two and not the best gun on the list well even though it's my favorite gun i had to be objective you'll see what i mean when i get to number one but first the stats you need a total of 60,000 support kit experience points to unlock the pkp it has a fire rate of 600 rpm which is actually on the slow end especially when compared to the m249's 800 rpm but the pkp makes up for the low rpm because it's a heavy damage lmg its damage distribution is exactly the same as the m60e4 it has a max damage of 34 and a minimum damage of 22 with a drop off range of 60 meters it's also a belt fed lmg so the belt size total and max ammo are all exactly the same as the other two belt fed lmgs and since it's a belt fed lmg it only has one reload time which is 5.38 seconds which is actually the fastest out of the five belt fed lmgs available in the game all right now that the stats are out of the way i can tell you why this is my favorite gun this thing just handles very very well it may be because i'm so used to it but i always tend to do very well with this gun regardless of whether i'm defending position or flanking behind the enemy now the pkp does have noticeable recoil it tends to have a vertical kick that may be difficult for beginners to manage so it does take some getting used to but once you get used to it get ready to have some fun with high damage huge clip size and great handling this thing slices through multiple enemies at once with no problem at all it's really fun to use okay it's finally time let's finish off with the best lmg in the game the m240b you'll see why i had to make this number one over the pkp let's start off with the stats you need a total of 90,000 experience points to unlock the m240b and it fires at 650 rpm which is 50 rpm faster than the pkp while doing the same amount of damage yes it's a heavy damage lmg and it has the same damage distribution as the pkp and the m60e4 with a max of 34 and a minimum of 22 it also has the same amount of starting ammo and max ammo as those two lmgs its reload time is on the high side at 6.2 seconds 
which is the same as the M249 and when you're using an LMG you should always find a safe spot to retreat to when reloading. I mean it's not like a PDW when you have to reload in the heat of battle. The heavy damage and high fire rate make the M240B the fastest killing gun in the core game. The only gun that kills faster is the FAMAS which is part of the Back to Karkin DLC. Now the M240B does have relatively high recoil, higher than the PKP, but the beauty of it is the M240B's recoil is pretty even and easier to handle than the PKP. Its horizontal recoil is even, so it has no preference of drifting left or right, but it does have vertical recoil, pushing it up when firing at full auto. But if you add the flash suppressor, which reduces vertical recoil by the way, the M240B's recoil distribution becomes almost perfectly even, making it that much easier to handle, especially for beginners. So the high fire rate, high damage, and handling you could get used to make the M240B one of the most dangerous guns in the game. Well that's it guys, here's a quote of the week. We'll go over another class of weapons next week. If you haven't seen the top 5 assault rifles, it's on screen right now. Thanks for watching. If you like the commentary, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. If you like the gameplay, please check out Hobo and show him some support. Thanks again guys, I am the real Mossy. Tell your friends about me.